Hey there, Adam here. Today I wanted to do a basic introduction to Obsidian, assuming you've never used it before. I've done lots of videos on in, on discrete topics, but today I wanted to do one just on an, a complete beginner newbie overview of the program itself. Uh, my videos are known for being nice and short and to the point, so that's what we're going to do here today. Uh, we're not going to cover every last intricate detail because I think that's actually the incorrect way to learn how to use this program. I just want to get you up and running, taking notes, writing things down, and interested in, in the application. So what is Obsidian? Obsidian is a primarily a text-based uh, informational personal knowledge management system with interlinking documents uh, so you can sort of interlink your thoughts and just sort of document your life, business, however you want to use it. Uh, it is a knowledge management system. So this is a sample Obsidian text file uh, with a little overview of what we're going to talk about. So this is what it looks like. And this is an, a link to another document. Uh, you can also put images. You can embed uh, Excel spreadsheets. You can embed tables. You can embed PDFs. I, it, it's informational. So why should you use Obsidian? If you are the type of person that keeps track of knowledge, which is all of us, so let's just say you need to keep track of a, uh, you know, what your normal grocery list is, you can put it into Obsidian. If you have a, you know, a checklist for when you go to the beach, make a note, you know, make a little note file. Just say beach checklist, put it in Obsidian. Uh, anything that you are going to want to reference back to at any point in time, you can put it into Obsidian, and it just gets saved as a little tiny text document, and uh, you can access it at any time. Uh, another reason to use Obsidian is the interlinking of topics. Uh, so this is, the, the basic idea is that if, two topics relate to each other in some way, you can create a link between the files, which can take you back and forth, such as this. So this takes me to another file, uh, and you can do that with any type of file. And it's a, it's nice, clean, easy, and it has ways to track it on the uh, back end. Another reason it's upsetting is the ease of export. These files are saved as little, basically just text files, notepad files. Uh, they're saved locally on your computer, you can copy and paste them at any time. You do not have to try to finagle something like uh, Notion's online system to export or some other proprietary software. Everything is easy to export. And of course, the, a big reason to use Obsidian is unless you're using the sync function, it is free. So here's how you get started. What you're going to first want to do is create a vault. So you'll open Obsidian. You'll be taken to this screen you will create a new vault. A vault is essentially a, the overarching folder structure in which all your files are saved. So like, for example, this is my YouTube vault. It's separate from my primary vault just because I'm using it for this tutorial. So you'll create this. You will name your vault. You'll pick a location. I had, so here's my three vaults, creative writing, but my personal one, and then this one we're using it for this video. You can save it in Dropbox. There's a, I have a video on my channel about syncing with Dropbox. Uh, or you can save it locally and just back it up to Dropbox or some other external hard drive. Name it, put it in a folder, hit create, and then you'll have you'll be taken to the screen, which will be look more like this because you won't have any files yet. So your files live over in the left hand side. Uh, if it's closed up like this, you can just expand it. This this will be all your files. So your files are you just click on them. And they open up on the top. If you hold control, you can have multiple open. Or I think you just click as a new tab. Uh, right click it. So that's how you create the vault. So how do the files work? So the, the files are just individual text files. You can create a new one by clicking the plus button, create a new file. Uh, you can do control plus N. And you can just name it new file. Here's a file. And then let's just say, let's interlink it back to our introduction. Uh, you just do the brackets introduction and click on it, and there you go. So that's that's how you create a file. I, basic file interlinking is what I was just showing you. I, and one thing that this is probably the primary reason that most people look at Obsidian to begin with is file interlinking. So let me just use a good example. Let's just say you create a, uh, like a beach trip file. So this is for your trip to the beach. I, and let's just say you need to, you have a beach checklist. You have 
uh, I don't know, people who are going with you to the beach. And you can save these as separate files. I mean, you could also just type it in this list, or you can just do it as separate files. So you can click on it, open it up, and put your checklist here, checklist, and then it will be saved for future reference. I uh, one big thing to keep in mind uh, is that you can at any point in time you can go up here and check on the uh, the interlinking window to see which ones are connected. So at any point in time you can check and see which notes are connected, which other notes, and of course they're just all saved on this side view as well. So it's a it's a flat file structure, and uh, you can interlink at any point in time, or you can tag them. So the uh, formatting of these files is pretty basic, all things considered. So you, it's a markdown language, which if you're not familiar, is uh, it's, it's basic for basic sake. Uh, so a couple of the easy markdown commands that you will learn uh, for interlinking, you will do brackets. For uh, headings, you're just gonna do the pound key and then, you know, heading. And then if you want to do a smaller heading, it's two bracket, you know, it's it's two uh, pound keys heading two. Uh, if you've ever edited with a uh, a markdown language in WordPress or something like that, it's very similar. There are lists online of basically all the markdown commands. We're not going to get into it in too much detail. Uh, along with markdown commands, you can also tag files. So tagging is similar to file interlinking, but can be used for different purposes. So for example, in my personal one, I have a people tag. I am, the way I use that is, let's just say I meet a new person for work. I can create a file, John Smith, and I'll tag that as people. And then just say, you know, I, I met him, I don't know, at the mixer. And then let's just say another person, uh, Susie. I can't spell Susie. Sure. Zooms in, people. Now you'll see, you can go up to the top right, and this side panel is essentially where your links and uh, tags will live, and you can see the tags. And then I've got three files that are labeled with the people tag. I, and that's the way that you can use this if you don't want to have them interlinked to one another, because it's, it's a category as opposed to sort of a interlinked ideas. Hopefully that makes sense. I know perhaps we're already getting in a little, a little over our heads. It is difficult to uh, really introduce the program without going into some amount of detail. So that's an introduction to the tags. Searching is you get, just have a search in the top left. So let's just say let's try, we're trying to find John's file. Type in John. You got John. Click on John, and it'll take you to the file. So let me uh, show you a couple different things you'll probably want to configure when you first start using the program. You're going to go into the configuration settings in the bottom left. You're going to open it up. And you've got a couple different options here. The big one that I would really suggest you take a look at is the appearance tab. You can change your font size and you can change what's called the zoom level. So for example, if I made it 91%, look at that, look how much smaller it is. Uh, I don't, I have terrible vision, so I keep it up pretty highly zoomed with pretty high font level. I, and that works for me. But if you want to see more stuff at a time, you can adjust those to your liking. Uh, that's probably the primary one I would say is just play with the appearance, get it to a point where you like it, and just start using it. That's sort of the big the big takeaway I want you to, to take away today is don't get fancy. I, you really want to just sort of jump in and start taking notes. Uh, one of the Perhaps the easiest way to get started with Obsidian is to do the daily notes feature. So you will see on the left-hand side, open today's daily note. You can click it. You'll see that it's it just uses this sort of basic file format. And then just write stuff down, write what you're thinking about today. I, if you think you're going to talk about in the future, so let's just say you, you're, you make YouTube videos for a living. You can, if you think you're going to, Talk about YouTube videos in the, in the future, you can say, I made a YouTube video today. And then just 
write down your thoughts. I just start putting information into Obsidian. Whenever you get a new bit of anything, just make a note. You know, just do Control N, write it down, get it into the system, and you'll start accumulating lots of little files here. Uh, do not worry too much about organization when you first start. Just get stuff in the system. If you're not, you know, basically, if you're not looking for stuff in the system, you're not using it enough. You don't have enough in here yet. Uh, it really is sort of that simple. Uh, you can start to set up sort of data view type things and templates and all these other sort of fancy ways once you have systems in place. But until you know how you want to use Obsidian, it's sort of beyond the scope of what you're trying to do. You just don't know what you don't know. Uh, you can look at some of those videos where people talk about how they use Obsidian. I have a few myself. Take a look at those if you want to, to get an idea as to some of the possibilities. But this is not a complicated program. It's Essentially, it's a text editor. It's a text editor that allows you to easily bounce between different text files and search the, the text files. So from that perspective, not a terribly complicated piece of software, although it does have lots of options and plugins once you get to that point. So I think I've pretty much touched on everything I wanted to introduce you to with Obsidian just to get you started. I, I think that you'll enjoy it if you spend some time. I, I would not give it a whole lot of thought so you have at least 20, 30, 40 notes. I, there's a really cool graph view that shows how stuff's linked, but it doesn't do anything until you have a bunch of notes. So the more notes you have in the program, the better it works. Uh, and honestly, until you have about 50 to 100 notes, you're probably not really searching for much in here yet. Uh, it's, it's just sort of the way the program works. You know, it, any knowledge management system is not management until you have the knowledge in there. <laughs> so I, I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to Obsidian. Uh, let me know what topics you'd like to be discussed in the future if you have any questions. Uh, take a look at some of my other videos in the Obsidian playlist that this video will be included in. I, if you have some specific how-tos, such as how to adjust image sizes, how to I, you know, sort of tweak some settings, how to do templates, etc. I have videos and all those. I take a look at them, and uh, I hope you enjoy it because it really is a cool program. I've been using it for quite a while now, uh, and really, it's one of the only things on my computer that stays open all day, every day. So if that tells you how good it is. All right. Thanks. Bye.